Hello and welcome to this interview for the IET Transport Sector. I'm Paula Marie Brown, Head of the Sector, and as part of the work we're doing on low carbon vehicles, I'm here in the North East to, to interview an owner and driver of a Tesla electric car. Thank you very much for joining me today. As we can see, you actually drive a Tesla, no ordinary electric vehicle. Why a Tesla and not a Nissan Leaf? So when I originally was looking to buy the car, which was about two years ago, the Nissan Leaf wasn't on the road yet. Uh, and that in a sense made the choice rather easy. But in fact, when I test drove this car, I really fell in love with it. It has amazing off the line acceleration. The electric motor delivers high torque. It's a joy to drive. It's a real sports car and I had you know, a blast with it. In addition to that, I was looking for a highly practical car that could do a couple of hundred miles range so that I could go to all my business meetings. For example, today I've come down from Edinburgh to Newcastle, it's about 100 miles, and I've got 100 miles to go home. And I could, in fact, have done that entirely without charging here. Um, so 200 mile range, fantastic acceleration, beautiful sporty car, what's not to like? So the factors that influenced me to decide to have an electric car, I suppose fundamentally and, and at heart were green choices. Deep down underlying that we have to deal with a number of issues and one of them is transportation. And for me, driving an electric car and powering it with renewable energy is the right way to, to go. So the Tesla Roadster um, can accelerate from 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds for this, this model, which is the Sport. Um, it's a, yeah, that, that's a great thing. Um, the question of whether it loses performance as the battery nears the end of its, uh, of its charge, actually it does. Um, when you get to about 160 to 180 miles into the battery, um, you begin to drop down to the performance of merely a Porsche 911 or something like that, rather than something even faster. Um, it's not really a big hardship, uh, but in fact yes, because the battery is more depleted, um, it can deliver less power, but it can still deliver an awful lot of power. I think first of all we have to say range anxiety is real. You know, people do feel anxious about range. Sometimes I feel anxious about range. Um, the reality is on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, most people who own electric cars start the day with a full car, uh, which is a bit different from petrol. You've charged it overnight and it's sitting in your garage or on your driveway fully charged. So you've already got 100 miles range or 200 miles range depending on the car and for most people on, on a daily basis they jump in the car and they drive where they want and they don't really think about it. It's only when you start to think about driving to the next city or the city beyond that that you really start to think about range. And to be honest there's nothing really to be anxious about if you do just a tiny little bit of planning. So you know, think about where you're going think about how far away it is, think about how far the car can go, think about where the charging stations are and you know perhaps plan your meetings so that you can charge while you're in a meeting as for example I'm going to be today with the IET event. So I charge the Tesla every night pretty much. To me it takes a minute. It takes the length of time it takes to actually connect the car and walk away. The car might be charging for two hours, three hours, four hours. To be honest that's not time that I'm spending with the car. It's time the car's spending charging, and there's a big difference. So this is the question of whether public charging in the street, for example, the charger that my car is currently connected to, um, should be subsidized, or in the long run should have a, a cost to the user. Yes. I absolutely think they should have a cost. I think a reasonable cost is one that recovers substantially the cost of the electricity and the cost of infrastructure. I'll pay a lot more for a fast charge on a long journey than I will for a slow charge in a car park at uh, an office building, for example. I probably don't need that slow charge, but when I'm on a long journey and I need a fast charge, I really need it. And essentially, I'm prepared to pay the same price as petrol. I'm prepared to pay per mile the same amount that it would cost me if I was fueling it with diesel or petrol but I'll only use that long distance charger in a motorway service stop or somewhere like that, you know, the number of times a year that I make long journeys. So what's going to make the difference to plug-in vehicles, whether they're plug-in hybrids, extended range electric vehicles or electric vehicles, yes. pure electric vehicles, becoming the norm in the UK? I think there's, a, there's quite a range of things that have to change. 
Um, one of the ones that I'm very passionate about is many, many people, probably the majority of people, don't have access to, on, to off street parking. If they don't have off street parking, they can't organize their own electricity supply to plug into. So, in the long run, we have to see up and down every street in the land many, many on street parking bays that have uh, electric sockets. Ultimately, charging stations have to be everywhere for this to work. I think it's a matter of time, but it's also a matter of political will, and it's a matter of joined up governance, if I can put it that way, between local government, central government, utility companies. They all have to work together and want this to happen. If that, if that piece comes into play, then <coughs> all we have to do is worry about the social piece. I think the social piece will come because people will see their neighbours driving these things, they'll jump in, have a ride, realise that they're actually more fun to drive than petrol or diesel, and they're actually much cheaper to drive. And I think when all those things come together, it won't be more than a decade or two before a very substantial change happens. You should own and drive an electric vehicle because it's more fun, it will in the long run cost you less, and you will be doing your part to save the environment, both locally in terms of air pollution and globally in terms of uh, carbon reduction.